Section 19.1, spontaneous processes. So a spontaneous process is going to happen automatically. So if you were to put some water in the freezer, at that temperature, water spontaneously turns into solid. Liquid turns to solid. If you were to put an ice cube out on the counter at room temperature, it would spontaneously melt. So it's something that's going to happen all of a sudden, on its own. You don't have to do anything to it. If you were to knock a book off the table, it will fall. Okay, you put a, that book into uh, an unstable position in a gravity field and it automatically falls. It goes from a high, high a potential energy to a low potential energy. That's spontaneous. Non-spontaneous would be its opposite. Is that book gonna simply jump back up on the table? No, you can wait and wait and wait and it'll never jump. So spontaneous is gonna happen automatically, non-spontaneous, not automatically. Well, that's just the word. We're gonna see that in a spontaneous reaction, you have to consider two different terms. You have to consider the enthalpy of the system and you have to consider the entropy of a system. So let me uh, redefine that for you or remind you of it. So let's look at enthalpy first. If you remember, enthalpy is going to be a uh, delta H, and a lot of times you're going to see delta H with a, um, a degree sign there, a naught sign. It simply means at standard temperature and pressure. At normal temperature, uh, which is zero Celsius, at normal pressure, which is one atmosphere, what is changing in terms of the, um, the overall energy in the system? Okay, so this is going to be the overall... Uh, energy in the system. So let's imagine that we're going to have um, something burn in, so some methane gas burn. You're going to have some bond energy in the reactants, okay, the, the uh, oxygen in the air and the methane, and it's going to have some energy in the bond. And then when it reacts, that oxygen is going to react with the methane, and you're going to get some carbon dioxide, uh, carbon dioxide gas, um, and it's probably a little bit of soot, depending on how clean it is, and nothing else. And, and the rest is going to go away as energy. So you're going to have an, an, the bond energies of the methane, the energy that's, that's tying the methane together, the hydrogens and the carbon together, is going to have a certain energy or a certain enthalpy level. And then in the... Re, in the products, the carbon dioxide and the water that you're going to produce is going to have a certain amount. And in this case, it's lower. Well, what happens to the energy? It's released, and that energy is released, and that's an exothermic reaction. So anything that is like a fire would be exothermic. Well, what you're going to have is I'm going to have, I'll have a certain amount of bond energy here, and I called an enthalpy, and I have a certain amount here. Well, if I take the change in it, which is delta, I'm going to take the products minus, so I'm going to take delta H um, at products minus H of reactants, and it's either going to be a positive number or a negative. So let's imagine that this is a 3 and this is a 7, okay? This is higher than, the, the first is higher than the second. Well, 3 minus 7 is going to give you a negative number. So in the case of an exothermic reaction, okay, so exothermic, you're going to have a delta H, which is negative, okay? In the case of an endothermic reaction, where there's more energy in the products, less energy in the reactants, you're going to have a positive enthalpy, okay? So there's your, there is your first one. So we'll just review. Up here we'll have... Um, delta H, and, um, and del delta H is the enthalpy, and the enthalpy, remember, is the measure of the overall energy. Okay, so the second term we're going to look at is entropy, okay? Lots of people will make a mistake between entropy and enthalpy. It both starts with an N. Uh, everybody, everybody makes a mistake here. So entropy is going to be also, we're going to have a, a delta capital S. That's also got a little mark there because it's standard temperature and pressure. And delta S 
is going to essentially be randomness or chaos, or if you want to think dispersal. So what's dispersing? If I'm making something random, I'm going to take, say, something in a block, and I'm going to just scatter all of the particles together. So I can scatter, I can scatter the, the matter and make it farther away from each other. So I can, say, take a liquid, and then as I turn it into a gas, now the molecules are farther away. If the molecules are farther away, I have an increase in my entropy. It's more random. It's more chaotic. It's a higher entropy than it was. Okay, so it's dispersal. So it can either be dispersal of particles or it can be dispersal of, of, of energy. Okay, I can, I can make my, um, I can send in energy somewhere. So essentially, if you think of it like a gas, which is going to be more orderly, which is going to be less orderly, all right? Um, and we'll, 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 let's, let me give you some, some examples. For, for instance, if I wanted uh, a positive delta S, I would want more chaos, okay? More random. Well, how do I do that? I can either uh, change phase, okay? So if I change phase, uh, I can say go from a liquid to a gas, okay? And I can, it's more random because the, the particles were closer together, now they're farther apart. So that's, that's a higher entropy. That would be a positive entropy. I could uh, say, let's say I have two moles of gas at the beginning, and at the end of the reaction, I have three moles of gas. You know that from stoichiometry. Well, which is more or, uh, random or disorderly or chaotic? Three moles of gas are more random. Uh, two moles of gas is more composed or orderly. And so if I go from two moles to three, I've increased the entropy, okay? Um, I could increase the volume. If I increase the volume of a gas, what happens? Well, the gas fills the new volume. It's now bigger, and so the gas particles are farther away from each other. I've made it more random, more dis uh, dispersed, and so all of these cases you would have a positive delta S. So if you have it more random, it's going to be positive. If you're going to have a negative, it means it would be more compact. So all of the um, all of the pencils would fall in the box perfectly orderly, all perfectly in in line. Then it would be more more uh, orderly at the end. Then I have a negative entropy. If it's more chaotic or disorderly at the end, then I have a positive entropy. Okay. So knowing these two terms, enthalpy and entropy, will allow you to know what something is spontaneous. Okay, so here's the example, and again, you know this just like a book falling off the table. It's spontaneous when you leave a nail out in the wet that it will rust. It's non-spontaneous that a rust, a rusted nail in the air in the wet would go back to a to an iron nail. Now you can do this. You can take an iron uh, nail and put it into a very controlled environment where you keep all the gases and everything that you have at the beginning is still there at the end and not let not allowed to go somewhere else, and you can force it back. So for instance, you could put steam back across that nail and turn it back into, into iron. Okay, they even did that in the 18th century. Uh, so it's possible, but normally it's spontaneous because the path can't be retraced. So let's say that I make a gas. Let's say I, m I make a hydrogen gas as a, as a product, and that gas bubbles away and goes out into the environment. Well, that gas is no longer there to go back with. The, the reactant has been let off. So I cannot go back the same way that I came. So it's spontaneous if it's spon if it's, or it's irreversible. So there's another term in this chapter called reversible or irreversible. So let's imagine that you have a reversible reaction. Um, I can simply go back the other way, the very same way that I came, right? So... The, the, the path is exactly the same. If I change the path, then I, it's irreversible, okay? I cannot go back, the, if I go back a different way. So for instance, if I let some of the product go, and now I don't have that product to, to go back the other way, then it's irreversible. 
So reversible is when I have all the components and I can simply go back along the same path, same mechanism, one side or the other side. If, if not, it's irreversible. So this nail in this environment can't go back. All right, so let's do the simple way to tell if something is spontaneous. If something is spontaneous, all right, I'll write this, is spontaneous if and when, okay, you have an increase in entropy, okay, and a decrease in enthalpy. All right, now that's scary to look at that so mathy, but is it more random at the end, okay? And is there lower energy at the end? If it's more random and less energy, lower energy at the end, then it's spontaneous. It'll happen automatically. So let's imagine water falling off the top of a waterfall, okay? It, at the end, is it lower energy? Is that water now at lower energy at the bottom? Yes, it has lower potential energy. So my delta H is lower, it's decreased, okay? And then that, that water is, it's, for instance, it just goes everywhere, it splashes everywhere. It's not even self-contained in the creek anymore. Okay, so if it's more random, then that is a spontaneous reaction. A non-spontaneous reaction would be flipped where you would lower the delta H and it's more orderly, but higher energy, okay? So that would be like going from here to here. The, and you can have an endothermic reaction, but if you have an endothermic reaction to where everything is also becoming more orderly and higher energy, you could do that, but it's very unlikely. It's not gonna happen on its own. So for instance, you could take a battery that's dead if it's a rechargeable battery and put energy into it, and if you put energy into it, you could repack all of those molecules in such a way that you could then have a new battery, essentially. But you, it won't happen by itself. A battery won't automatically recharge. You have to put energy into it. So you can take, you can do a non-spontaneous reaction as long as you add energy. A spontaneous reaction will always dump energy and, you, and it's essentially for free. You can use it like a rubber band with some uh, that's stored or a, or a bow uh, string or a battery or something to where there's energy going to be released. Okay? So here's spontaneous processes. I mentioned this before. Ice melts spontaneously above zero, but the reverse, spon uh, reverse is spontaneous only below zero. So it's the same path, the same mechanism, but there, it's temperature dependent. In a reversible re, uh, process, the system changes in such a way that the surroundings can be put back in their exact original states simply by putting it out. So for instance, if I add heat and the temperature goes up, okay, I can remove heat and the temperature will go back down to its normal. That's a reversible reaction. But if something can't go back along the same path, it's irreversible. So irreversible, so anything spontaneous, that's important, any spontaneous process is irreversible. If you're going to have a, if the energy is going to be lower at the end and the entropy is also going to be more chaotic at the end, then it's not going to go back. The universe doesn't work that way. The universe always tends towards maximum entropy spontaneously. So the crayons get all jumbled. It doesn't go back orderly. You have to put specific energy. I have to clean my room. I have to put energy to clean my room. It automatically gets dirty. Okay, so the entropy is for free to get it to increase the entropy. To decrease the entropy, I have to add energy. But when you double, it's a double whammy. If you decrease the entropy, okay, which makes it more orderly, and you increase the energy where you have to put energy into it in order to have it there, that will never happen uh, spontaneously. And so spontaneous processes are irreversible. Hope that this is helping you.